This year, I set myself the biggest possible challenge ever. I set out to transform the entirety of Minecraft, creating the ultimate survival world for you to play for yourselves. That's right, I'm tackling every in-game structure, every major biome, and making crazy upgrades to create the ultimate Minecraft survival experience for you guys. That includes hundreds of secrets, hidden loot, side quests, treasure hunts, interactive areas, and story-related elements for you guys to explore with your friends. All in a survival-friendly world spanning across 16 million blocks. So far, we've tackled the plains, the desert, which includes the beaches, the mushroom and swamp, and the dark wood forest. We still have the mesa, savanna, tiger, snowy mountains, jungle, and even more to go. Today though, we're heading into the jungle and doing some serious upgrading. Seriously, the building in this biome took me over 150 hours alone. That's without all the planning, researching, story writing, scripting, and editing. We're gonna be upgrading the jungle temple, creating a huge ancient city, transforming the jungle village and pillager outpost and adding in a bunch of custom surprises for you guys to discover and interact with as well as loads of lore. And remember, if you guys want to see me continue this project and download it via my Patreon upon completion, then make sure we hit 250,000 likes and hit that subscribe button. You guys seem to absolutely smash the like goal without fail, so I believe in you. It's literally just Steph and I working on this massive project, so your support means the world and we love seeing your guys' ideas in the comments and on the Trixie Blocks Discord. So keep them coming. Anyway, to jump in and kick things off, it's time for some major terraforming. Although not pushing my building to its real limits, since we've got to keep things survival friendly after all. By the way, please bear with the glitchy visuals during the terraforming as the world unloads around me. Unfortunately, working at such a large scale means that even with the render distance maxed out, we still can't keep everything loaded in. Now, I know I'm going a bit crazy with the terraforming here, but hear me out. We've tackled some biomes so far that are typically super flat, including the plains and the desert. Plus, we have the mesa and savanna to go, which are also pretty flat environments. So, I thought why not give you guys some really cool landscape to explore in the jungle, as the only other area set to have a more dynamic dynamic landscape is the snowy mountains. Since I wanted to create a super intricate landscape to really immerse you guys in your jungle adventures, I actually spent two weeks just making manual edits to this terrain to get it just right. Even though there won't be natural ores in these mountains themselves, there'll be plenty of secrets to explore, including a custom abandoned mine shaft with its own ores, which you'll see later in this video. Plus, I'm planning on a crazy network of mines for our Mesa Canyon, so that should fulfill all your custom cave desires. I was sure to add tons of variety to these mountains and make them very dynamic, decorating them with plenty of caves, rocky overhangs and steep cliffs. To break up the mountain range even further, I mapped out a route for plenty of valleys, rivers and waterfalls that connect back into the ocean surrounding the ultimate survival world. Right, so before we get into the craziest transformation of the ultimate survival world so far, please support the channel as I tell you about today's sponsor, Monster Legends. Fancy building your own world on the go for your very own monsters to live in? Well, Monster Legends is free to play on Android and iOS, ready for you to start collecting monsters and building your very own army. Now there are hundreds of monsters to collect, and let's be honest, you definitely want to have your very own ancient kung fu wizard panda. And just look at my guy Sir Valga, he's got some serious drip right there. You can even breed your favourite monsters of different elements and rarities, so the combinations are endless. Throw in a bunch of apples for your monsters to nibble on, and they'll level up in no time. You can test your skills in crazy battles, from dingy dungeons all the way to adventure maps, with the added bonus of flexing your monsters in real-time battles with your friends. As a monster master, you can team up with other epic gamers and refine your skills in team wars. With new events every week, there's always something for you and your monsters to sink your teeth into. Download the game via the link in the description before October 25th for special rewards worth $30, including 50,000 food, 300,000 gold, 10 gems, and the epic monster now tap the link below, download Monster Legends, and get a head start. In the centre of the mountainscape, I cleaned up the large stone island and scattered around some rocks and plinths protruding from the bottom of the pit, which would eventually be filled with water. Speaking of water, with our landscaping complete, I started filling up our valleys with blue wool, which would eventually become the various rivers and waterfalls of the jungle valley. Now I've used this technique before on the channel, and it's the best possible way to achieve some really nice looking waterfalls and rivers, without Minecraft's water physics breaking through and filling up the entire map. To finish off our shiny new jungle landscape, I added grass, moss and plenty of foliage to begin to add a little life to the basic terrain. And as you can see, compared to the size of my character, this place is huge. 
but it's still very empty. And jungles are typically known for being, well, the complete opposite of that. <laughs> So, to turn our epic landscape into an actual jungle, I created a few variations of palm and jungle trees, an assortment of shrubs, plants and bushes to add greenery to the jungle floor, and of course some custom boulders and rocks to add even more variation. Now if you remember in previous episodes, I spoke about how the desert village traded with the jungle, using its wood to rebuild their community after the pharaohs wither destroyed the ancient desert village. I wonder if other biomes have such good relations. Somehow, I don't think they're all great friends. But that's something you'll hear about later and we'll get to discover in the map itself once it's complete. Now, I had to start in true Jumanji style and create some giant statues to guard the entrance of what will soon be a legendary ancient city. To give you guys some context, the Jaguar was worshipped in Mayan culture and is often associated with power, bravery and foresight. Similarly, this jungle civilization built a pair of these powerful figures to not only protect their city, but also to encourage the worthy to tackle the maze of the Jaguar, empowered by these symbols of foresight and bravery watching over them. We're going to return to tackle this mysterious maze of the Jaguar shortly, but with our statue almost complete, I made a few small tweaks before repositioning it either side of this gap between the mountains. To kick off this ancient city, we're going to need to upgrade the vanilla jungle temple that's going to sit smack bang in the middle of it. Of course, I had to listen to you guys and take inspiration from Mayan, Incan and Aztec architecture for this one. Remember though, these creations are never meant to be historically accurate and if you don't see your favourite cultures or architectural styles in this survival world, then you definitely will when I make the next one. Anyhow, I transformed the original temple, attempting to incorporate a similar style and size. Well, actually, this isn't the whole thing. This is just the top of the temple. I guess I lied about the size. Now, since the jungle temple has been tackled in Minecraft so many times before, even by me, I tried to create something unique for this world, incorporating lots of different elements to each layer of the building. So, what did this intricate temple mean to the ancient jungle city? Well, every year, many of the city's people would undertake a perilous pilgrimage across the vast jungle landscape, searching for the four elemental protector totems. At each totem, they would leave valuable offerings and perform rituals to preserve the power of the sacred elements, which were essential for the city's survival. After finding earth, wind, fire and water, the pilgrimage would finish at the temple, and those who succeeded were celebrated in a grand ceremony as saviours of the city, and were provided with many valuable benefits for the next year. Year. One year, however, a desperate thief took on the pilgrimage, hoping that it would change her life for the better. She stole from her people in order to get hold of offerings for the four totems, hoping that she would be celebrated upon her return and given a comfortable life for the next year. Unfortunately, her deception tainted the rituals and the protection provided by the totems for centuries was tarnished. Eventually, the city dwellers could find no fertile land, their water was contaminated, their hunting ventures always seemed to end in fatalities, and the elements were totally against them. Many of the city's people passed away, and a small group decided to flee and seek refuge in a part of the jungle untainted by the elemental curse. They became one of the several tribes inhabiting the jungle wilderness, which you'll hear a bit more about later on. Anyway, to tie our grand temple into its equally grand surroundings, I had to do a little bit of terraforming to make some space for the main bridge to the city. I made a single column design and mirrored it down the length to support the rest of the walkway, etching in details and creating a staircase that leads down to ground level. I then copied the whole design and positioned it on each side of the temple, branching out into the mountains in preparation for what will be the rest of the ancient city. I also included some more foundations around the base of the temple to support this massive structure. At the front of our temple, I created this Mayan inspired statue head that will act as a water duct. I added some streams to the jungle temple that filter off through these stone channels and out the mouth of these abstract faces to add a really magical vibe to the temple. With one channel complete, I mirrored the design to the other side to tie things up. For the interior of our giant new jungle temple, I was able to include many walkways, balconies and other areas for you guys to explore thanks to the multiple levels of this structure. As you can imagine, this temple was hugely important to our jungle civilization, being fundamental to many of their rituals and ceremonies. It's even rumoured that the jungle emperor, who died after the elemental curse struck the city, is buried deep within the temple with his most precious possessions protected by dozens of booby traps. Also, you may recognise the villager head statues from a pre 
previous Ultimate Survivor World episode. Given the plethora of sacred artifacts found in our ancient jungle city, there are many famous tales of adventurers who travelled here, including members of our wealthy trading family from our Darkwood mansion. In fact, you may have spotted that they've orchestrated a grand heist to steal a sacred statue from the city, which still remains in their mansion to this day, and it's rumoured that this was the source of their bad luck and eventual disappearance. Anyway, with the temple finally complete, I headed back outside and decided to relocate the Jaguar statues, pushing them a little bit further back towards the ancient city. This was to make room for the only way in and out of the city, the maze of the Jaguar. For this legendary maze, I was inspired by the Labyrinth, famous in Greek mythology for playing host to the monstrous Minotaur. As you may have noticed, I love combining inspirations from many influences since there are no rules in Minecraft, and it gives me a chance to be as inclusive as possible, which I I've really enjoyed so far. To finish up the maze, I incorporated the first four elemental totems that are hidden across the ancient city. Perhaps you can find them all and discover their secrets. This earth protector totem was created to keep the ground fertile, bringing the people a good harvest and also to protect the land from natural disaster. Now that's some pretty deep stuff from our jungle folk. And as for the maze itself, it was designed to test the bravery of those seeking entrance to the ancient city and is said to be enchanted, leading to many unworthy adventurers becoming insane before finding the exit. I wonder if you and your friends are worthy of entering the ancient city. Now with all this talk of an ancient city, I'd better start building it, hadn't I? Remember though, this is all just a supplement to my jungle temple transformation. The actual vanilla village upgrade will be totally separate, so be sure to stick around for that. Anyhow, to start things off, I added a bunch of platforms and additional bridges around the mountainscape to start plotting out the city's foundations. I also added some of the larger infrastructural buildings at this stage, which I'm not going to run through in detail as I want you guys to have plenty to discover when you explore the map for yourselves. Just imagine discovering this hidden deep within a jungle. This seriously is an adventurer's playground. So guys, this particular building is super special and I'm very excited to reveal its purpose to you. Now you may recall that the desert and jungle biomes have always had a solid trading relationship, frequently exchanging materials by sea. In addition to this, over the centuries, the two civilizations created a huge mine network, with a tunnel spanning between their two biomes to transfer ores and other resources to one another. This building is the grand entrance to the interbiome mining network, and I can't wait for you guys to explore it for yourselves once the map is released. Next on my agenda was to brighten things up a little bit, so I whipped up this huge fire brazier. I then created a couple of standard designs to assist with tackling this large area, including a basic building and pillar design to kick things off. I then placed the fire brazier either side of the jungle valley and a couple of the standard buildings elsewhere before moving on to plan out where I would place the city's buildings using the classic red wool technique. And of course, it was then time to populate the city with these smaller buildings for our city folk to live in. Although, this place has been pretty much empty since the elemental curse struck, which you'll remember from early in this video. In its heyday though, this city was self-sufficient, bustling with inhabitants. They had their own military, city hall, marketplace, prison, library, bank, and more. You may even spot a little reference to my original jungle temple transformation with this similarly designed shrine sitting atop a mountain. Rather than spoiling all the fun now, I'll leave the interiors for you guys to check out when the map's finished. Last but not least, I had to add that custom mine that I promised you guys, where the jungle sources its valuable 1.17 ores, and now you know why the desert was so keen to have good trading links with the jungle. Anyhow, as you can see I created a large lift and crane for moving materials around, which you can imagine would be pretty tricky given that the whole city is spread across a mountainscape. As promised, I added in an entrance to some custom caves where the ancient city folk did their mining back in the day. I wonder if there are any shiny 1.17 resources left to be found in here. With the ancient city complete, which was really all just a massive transformation of the jungle temple with lots of added extras, I placed down the trees and shrubs that we created earlier to bring the jungle to life. To really add to that jungle vibe, I added some giant hanging vines across the whole city, linking mountain peaks to building tops and bridges. And that just about completes the Ultimate Survivor World's legendary ancient jungle city. I suppose it's just about time to move on to the rest of the biome. Scattered around the jungle, I decided to place three small temples for you guys to discover. These temples were built by the tribe of survivors who fled the ancient city after the elemental curse as soon as they felt lost in the jungle without a true spiritual connection to their gods. 
They built these temples to revive many of the rituals and ceremonies they had performed in the city's grand temple, and to reconnect with their spirituality after all the adversity they had faced. It's said that some descendants of the original elemental curse survivors still occasionally visit these sacred sites for worship and special ceremonies. I wonder if the survivors' ancestors now happen to live in the village we're about to build. Before we move on to the jungle village transformation, it's time to populate more of our vast jungle with these trees, shrubs and rock clusters that we made earlier. As you can see, I left a clear area to do some terraforming for the village transformation. I created a large lake and waterfall, feeding into some winding rivers that lead straight out into the ocean. I made sure to keep the landscape nice and tiered to keep things interesting, since this is the biome for more extreme terrain. To plan out the transformation, I placed down the original vanilla village around the new landscape and mapped out the pathways and bridges to provide a layout. One of the most requested features that you all wanted me to add to the Ultimate Survival World jungle was tree houses, so I had to include some for you guys. Taking inspiration from the vanilla village buildings, I created two alternative treehouse designs to sit high up in the canopies of our jungle trees. I then scattered them across the village, connecting them up with thin, rickety bridges to create a treetop network above the ground-based village. The ground-based village was feeling a little short of bridges now, so of course I added the bridges that I planned out below too. And to finally kick off the profession buildings, I began with the cleric. Similarly to my plains cleric, I decided to go with an alternative building design, given that a cleric is often perceived as a healer. So I took the wagon design that I made for the plains biome and adapted it to house our jungle's wandering voodoo doctor. No one ever sees the wagon arrive or leave and its bizarre, rickety structure seems to defy all physics. But no one asks any questions, since our voodoo doctor is a little prone to casting hexes on those who snoop. He does make great herbal tea though, 5 stars on Uber Eats. Next up, I transformed the Fletcher's building. I opted for a relatively simple design that somewhat matches the vanilla building, with plenty of targets and firing ranges to test out the latest arrows. He also holds free archery classes for the kids on Wednesdays. And finally for our butcher, I decided to also combine the profession with the farmer role, since the two go hand in hand. So I created a quaint little jungle farm and a small farmyard to wrap up the profession buildings. Now since our village was still extremely empty at this point, it was time to transform some default vanilla houses to place around. I tried to stick as closely as possible to the vanilla designs to make this as authentic an upgrade as possible. I had to include some stilted building elements though, since it's such a classic jungle building design, particularly near bodies of water and rivers. So you may remember from earlier that there were several tribes inhabiting the jungle, one of which was made up of the survivors of the elemental curse in the ancient city. Over centuries, these tribes lived in territorial conflict with one another and eventually with other biomes seeking expansion. After centuries of war, the tribes agreed to live in harmony. Too many lives had been lost and the people had grown tired of living in fear. They created a new community which has thrived ever since in the form of this charming jungle village. Now with our village transformed, it's time to add the remaining trees and upgrade our pillager outpost, which comes with some interesting lore. Now for those of you who have been following this series closely, you might remember that a plague broke out in the outer darkwood settlements located near the coast. Those who escaped the zombie infested village fled to the main darkwood village, but they were turned away as the villagers were terrified of catching the plague. The stranded survivors fled across the river to the edge of the jungle, turning to a life of pillaging and scavenging to survive. They took over an abandoned outpost that the jungle's most powerful tribe had used centuries ago to protect the jungle's border. The survivors began to clear an area, destroying the trees to create a new settlement. Meanwhile, the jungle villagers have lived in peace for decades since their tribes aligned and made a pact to live in harmony. But the survivors from the Darkwood Forest are threatening such peace and destroying the jungle's sacred land. As I mentioned when creating the Darkwood Forest, perhaps you guys can make it your quest to restore the abandoned Darkwood village to its former glory so it can start fresh and now save the jungle from the threat of the pillagers too. And with all that building and lore covered, let's take a look at the completed Ultimate Survivor World Jungle.
Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Your support has been absolutely crazy the last few months. Now, don't forget to hit that 250,000 like goal if you want to see me continue this project. Also, which biomes would you like to see next? And before you click away, please stick around for some important announcements. Remember to check out my Patreon for my completed world downloads, which you can check via the link in the description. If you have any questions or suggestions, or just want to join the Blocks Fam community, which is now nearly at 30,000 members strong, please join the Discord. We hold a bunch of competitions and giveaways, and it's a great place to make new friends. Also, I mentioned in the last video that I'll have some merch on the way soon. Hopefully, by the next Ultimate Survivor World episode, it will be live and ready for you guys to get your hands on. So, be sure to keep an eye out for some updates. You'll be able to get your hands on some exclusive Trixie Blocks posters of my most popular builds. Plus, we've created an assortment of some super wearable designs available on tons of items in loads of colours. So, there'll be something for everyone. Once again, thank you to Monster Legends for sponsoring this video. Be sure to click the link down in the description to claim your rewards worth $30. Thanks again guys and I'll see you in the next one.